Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. If you've followed the channel for a while, you've probably seen my previous reviews of the Dan Clark Audio Aeon 2 Closed and also the Stealth. In the case of the Aeon 2 Closed, I liked them but didn't love them, and in the case of the Stealth, they really didn't move me at all. But despite that, I kept hearing around forums, and particularly from some of my channel patrons, just how good the Aeon 2 Noir were. The Noir is essentially an updated version of the Closed, as I understand it, it's just a different set of pads. And having heard a bunch of people say how great they were, I was keen to try them out for myself to see if this was the pair of Dan Clark Audio headphones that would finally capture my heart. properly understand the Noirs, I've got three different comparisons coming up in this review, so I'm going to move through fairly quickly and get to those comparisons. But so you know where we're heading, I'm going to compare the Aeon Noirs with the Beyodynamic T5 third generation, the ZMF Verite Closed, and also the Mesa Lyrics. So there's some pretty tough competition there, let's see how the Noirs stack up. Before we talk about any sound quality or comparisons, the first thing I want to point out is just how amazingly designed the DCA Aeon series are. And that's why I don't yet have them on the stand in front of me, because if you're not already familiar with DCA's products, you've got to see just how small these headphones can get. Now these are a full-sized closed-back headphone. They're not some compact portable device, they are a full-sized can, and yet they fit inside this tiny, tiny case. Before I open the case, I do want to mention one minor gripe that I have, and that is that the case is so snug around the headphones that I always feel uncomfortable putting the cable in there and pressing it against the headphones. So that's one really minor gripe that I have. I would have liked to see a pouch or pocket somewhere that was clearly giving enough space for the cable separate from the headphones, but it's a minor deal, and it's not to say the cable can't go in there, I just feel a bit uncomfortable with just how snug things get. If I open up the case though, where things get amazing is when you see how well the headphones fold up. So yes, this is a full-sized closed back headphone. As you can see there, there's this fascinating folding design that lets the headband wrap right around the headphones and make them a really compact package. And I love that. This is a reason that for me, the DCA design is one of the best in the world. I'll come back in a second and talk about the headphone design, comfort, all those sorts of things. But before I get there, let me finish off on the accessory front. We've already talked about the case. The other thing I want to mention is that you get a nice cable. It's not a special cable in any way. There's nothing amazing about it, but it feels like it's made of good quality materials. It's got a 3.5mm plug with a screw-on 6.3mm adapter. And at the other end, you've got a pair of high rose connectors. Now, I don't like the fact that these are very proprietary and they're more expensive if you want to buy an aftermarket cable with these but I do like the fact that they connect and disconnect very easily from the housing. So all in all, I'm a fan of the cable. I happen to also have, which I bought separately for the Noirs, the upgraded Vivo cable from Dan Clark Audio, and that cable is absolutely a joy to interact with. Sonically, it's a little bit cooler and leaner sounding than what you get from the stock cable, and I know some of you are going to be freaking out that I just said a headphone cable can make a difference, but having listened to both, I do believe that the Vivo cable has got a slightly different tonality, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just different. Putting aside tonalities though, it's also a beautiful thick, soft, and still relatively lightweight cable that I absolutely love using. So in terms of accessories, I think the Noirs are absolutely great, the case is great, the cable is fine, the upgrade cable options are exceptional, and that then brings us to the headphones themselves. The design is fairly unique in the world of headphones, and that's because they use a fairly compact sized cup for a full sized headphone. And yet on the inside of each cup, there is plenty of space for your ears. I don't think these would cause any body problems, even those with larger ears should be completely fine. Now if you've just seen the white padding in there, I'll come back and talk about that in a second. But before we get there, let's talk about the rest of the design. You've got these articulating sort of gimbals or arms here around the headphones, and that's going to give you good rotation of the cups in and out that way, as well as a bit of rotation just from the spring in these overarching rails. 
Speaking of the overarching rails, these are what allows the leather suspension band to slide up and down to adjust to the side of your head. And I really like this design. It's very quick and easy to get a good fit, but it's also very, very comfortable. In my experience, I think all of the designs with the leather or similar material suspension band are generally some of the most comfortable. Anything with padding and solid headbands touching the head can often get uncomfortable after a while, but I never have that problem with these. Coming back down to the cups themselves, they're made of plastic and metal, but it's painted to look like carbon fiber. At least I don't think there's any real carbon fiber in here, but they look pretty schmick, I think. We've then got the pads here, which are solid leather on the outside and the section that touches the skin, and then they're perforated on the inside. And that, if I remember rightly, is the big change from the original Aeon 2 Closed, and is responsible for a shift in the sound quality. But I'll get to the sound quality shortly. Before we get there, I want to talk about these pads, if I can get it out, that you saw on the inside. Just like with the Aeon 2 Closed, the Noir ships with three different sets of padding that go in front of the driver, and it allows you to tweak the response of the headphone just a little bit, but it does make a significant difference. Now, as you can see, and it was a bit clumsy because I wasn't looking at it, each of the pads just sits inside the headphone. It's held in by the ear pads itself, but they're very easy to put in and remove. And in just a second, I'm gonna talk you through what I heard, and of course, show you some measurements for each of the different pad options installed, and one without it as well. Before I get there though, the final thing I wanna mention is that of course, as you've already seen on the cable, we've got high rose connectors on the bottom of each cup, and that again makes connection really simple, very comfortable, and all in all, the design, the comfort, the usability of these is absolutely top notch. From an ergonomics point of view, I don't necessarily think that these are the very best headphone I've ever tried. I'm not sure what would be, but I do know that these are right up there alongside all the very best. And so let's now start talking about sound quality and specifically the sound with the various damping pads installed. Or in the starting case, the sound with no damping pads installed. I'll talk about the overall sound of the headphone in a moment, but before I get to the general sound of the headphone, I am just gonna step through what each pad, what each damping filter does to the sound of the headphone. And starting with no damping at all, I find that the sound is generally very enjoyable, and I'll talk in a moment about what that means. But the only drawback with no damping installed at all is I find that occasionally the Noirs can get just a little bit shouty in the upper registers. It's gonna depend a lot on the source you're driving them with and the track you're listening to, because they're not an overly shouty headphone. But without any damping, there can just be a little bit too much energy in some of those upper mid-range and treble frequencies that can get just a little bit forceful. As we then move through the different filtering options, the first one is this fairly transparent, both visually and sonically, fairly transparent black foam. And I do find that this helps to tame just a little bit of treble. It takes a tiny bit of that shoutiness off, but it does retain a good sense of sparkle from the noirs. So if you enjoy your treble, but you don't quite like the sound of it with no damping at all, this is a nice compromise to keep the treble, but take away just a little bit of that shoutiness. Putting down the foam, we've then got the black felt. This is quite a stiff, coarse black felt. There's almost no light transmitted through these, and that also tells us there's going to be less treble. These take the taming of the treble a bit further, therefore, and I don't mind them, but to me, they're a little bit too polite in some ways. They tame the treble, but they don't kind of give you anything back in return. They're not bad, I can't stress that enough. None of the damping options here are bad. The non-damping option isn't bad. But in my preferences, the black felt is probably my least favorite. When we move to the white felt pads that I've currently got installed there, they stop even more treble coming through, and they give you a greater sense of bass and warmth from the headphone as a result. It makes the noirs significantly richer and warmer sounding. But what that does, unlike the black felt, is that it allows some of the mid-range detail and clarity to come forward. So by pulling back on some of the treble, the mid-range and bass detail and quality is more present and more available. I find the black felt doesn't do that as much, and so that's what I meant before when I said that the treble was pulled back, but you kind of don't get anything back in return. And that's why for me, I tend to actually swing between the non-damping option and the white felt, which is the two extremes, or maybe occasionally the black foam. But if I had to pick one overall, and this speaks to my personal preferences for a slightly warmer, richer sounding headphone, my preferences do lean towards the white felt. And so let's talk now about the general overall sound qualities of the Aeon Noir. And what I've done for this description is I've used all the different pads as I've put together my notes. So what you're getting here is an understanding of what the Aeon Noir can be and is at all times, knowing that you can then tweak it just a little bit in whatever direction you want for your personal preferences. So in other words, what I'm about to say is not with a specific pad installed, it's the overall summary of what the Noir can be. And that is that it's a headphone that provides a wonderfully balanced overall sonic picture. It's got a nice bit of mid-bass presence for some punch and some drive, but it's not overdone. 
Depending on the damping you put in, these can be a fairly neutral sounding headphone, although one with a little bit of extra bass emphasis to give them that energy and thump, but they're not a thick, rich headphone unless you want them to be. The soundstage, as you probably expect being a closed back, doesn't have a huge amount of space to it, but there's a really good sense of separation between sounds and everything is enjoyable and never congested. The thing that I probably most enjoy about the Noirs though is their mid-range quality, and that's why I really like the white pads installed because it brings forward the qualities of the mid-range and makes them more present in the mix. The quality of the mid-range from the Noirs is rich, it's liquid in the sense that it's clean and articulate, it's not overly thick, but it's got a really nice sense of richness and harmonics, but still enough detail and presence up top in the treble to give it texture and breath and life. And finally, as I've already alluded to, they overall provide a good sense of articulation and attack at the leading edge of notes. And so it sounds like guitar strums, percussion, anything that needs that little bit of attack and edge to it, you can definitely get from the Noirs. And again, depending on what you want to prioritize, you can cycle through the different pads and choose whether you want more attack, say with no damping at all, or a bit less attack and more focus on the mid-range richness by using the white felt. And of course, everything in the middle too. And so to keep this description going with a specific track, I turned to Body and Soul by Amy Winehouse and Tony Bennett. One thing that did stand out to me as I listened to this from the Noirs was that they don't provide a great amount of space for such a large orchestration and arrangement. Regardless of the damping pads used, it always sounds like everyone is standing in much the same space on the stage. And that's a bit tricky when you've got lots of instruments and even an orchestra. It doesn't sound quite as natural as it should in terms of the space available for all those performers. That said, the quality of everything else is fantastic. Vocals are wonderfully balanced between richness and texture and detail. The cymbals have shimmer and texture, but they're never overdone, they're never too forceful or attacking. And the orchestra and strings are rich and full, but there's still a good sense of texture, so you know that it's an orchestra of individual instruments and not just a single blob of sound. Because of the slight lack of space available for all of that instrumentation to be going on, I'd describe the Noirs as not the most technically accurate or technically perfect rendition, but musically it's a very very enjoyable one. I did find that with a track like this where there is a bit more going on, particularly things like the orchestra, that removing the damping probably improves the experience for me with the Noirs. But ultimately, as I said before, all of the damping options are good and it's probably going to come down to your personal preferences which one you use. But unlike the Aeon 2 Closed, where I felt like none of the damping options was ever quite right and I was always kind of restless and wanting to change to a different damping but none of them satisfied, in the case of the Noirs, I feel like at least three of the options would keep me satisfied and not reaching for a different pad. I think for orchestral listening and similar type music, I probably would go with no damping, and for everything else, I'd probably go with the white, but that's just me. And the nice thing is that all of them sound good, so you can work it out for yourself. And having covered off all of that, let's now talk about how the Noirs compare to some really tough competition. The first comparison I've got for you is the Biodynamic T5 third generation. And at the time that I wrote my notes, which was actually a while back, and I'll explain why shortly, at the time that I wrote my notes on the T5 third generation, they were priced identically to the Noirs. I haven't since checked the price of either, but I have no reason to suspect that they're anything but similarly priced now, and so they're likely to be very direct competitors. For this test, I made my notes using Shake Your Money Maker by Jimmy Page and the Black Crows live at the Greek, and what I immediately noticed as I switched back and forth between the two was that the T5 sounded quite off, tonally speaking, after listening to the Noirs. And that's always a challenge. If you're switching back and forth between headphones, one can make the other sound off, or they can both do it to each other, just because of the contrast in the way they're tuned. But it was interesting to hear that the Noirs sounded more consistently tonally correct, whereas the T5s sounded deliberately and obviously coloured. And to be clear, I really, really like the T5s. If you've seen my review of those, you know how much I love them. And for a long time, they were my reference go-to closed back headphone. As I listened to both headphones more though, what I found was that the T5 was creating an extra sense of space, but it was doing it by sucking out the mids. And that can be lots of fun because it means you're getting this wonderful sense of bass and treble. It focuses you in on things like the percussion and the bass and therefore the rhythm of the tracks. And that was a lot of fun, but it was coming at the cost of some of that mid-range presence and detail and clarity. On the flip side, whilst the Noirs are bringing back the mid-range clarity and energy, they're also losing out on space. So it's a much more intimate presentation and a much smaller feeling soundstage. When Jimmy Page plays a guitar solo at around the three minute mark on this track, what I found was that with the Noirs, things sounded just right, 
There was a sense of richness and presence to the guitar, and it sounded like the focus of that recording at that time. From the T5s, the guitar was a bit more distant and had a bit less weight and presence to it. And being that it was a guitar solo, and therefore the focus of the song at that time, it was a little bit too disembodied and a bit too distant to be natural and realistic. I can't stress enough that the T5s aren't bad, they didn't sound dreadful on this track, but for me I kept leaning back towards the noir being just a bit more accurate despite that lack of space in the soundstage. And so to come back around to what I said at the beginning when I said that I took my notes on this quite a while ago, at the time that I wrote my notes I just picked up this set of noirs second hand and was comparing them with the T5s to see which one I'd keep. And given that I've got the noirs sitting here on my desk, you can probably tell that the noirs stuck around and the T5s did get moved on. It's not to say that the T5s are bad, I still think they're one of the best closed back headphones, particularly around that $1,000 price point. But for me, the Noirs are just a better balanced headphone across the board, and I'm happy to trade off that bit of space in order to get the better tonal balance and accuracy. And so knowing that the Noirs had bested their kind of direct competitor price-wise in the Biodynamics, I was then keen to see how they fared against higher priced competition. And the first one that happened to come across my desk in the time that I've owned my Noirs was the Mesa Lyrics. The Mesa Lyrics are more than twice the price of the Noirs, and so they should absolutely run away with things when it comes to a direct comparison. But it wasn't quite so clear cut. If you've seen my review of the lyrics, you'll know that I highly respect them, but I didn't quite love them. And comparing the two, listening to Still a Fool by Kenny Wayne Shepherd, what I heard was that the lyrics produce a better sense of space and imaging. There's a bit of a common theme here around the space, but it came at the cost of a slightly overly aggressive presentation from the lyrics. And that was the thing that ultimately held me back from really enjoying the lyrics, was that bit of aggression and attack that just goes a bit too far for me. Once again, what I found as I went back and forth between the two, was that the overall balance of sound from the Noirs is what won me over. Their ability to match bass levels and presence and punch, with details and crispness from the treble, so cymbals, guitars, all those things that need to be crisp and have a sense of attack, all of that is beautifully balanced by the Noirs. And for this comparison, I happen to be using no damping in the Noirs because it brought them closest in tonality to what I was hearing from the lyrics. Even without any damping in there, I still felt the Noirs had a better control over the aggression of the sound, so there was enough energy in attack, but not too much like the lyrics sometimes do. As much as the lyrics have a sense of technical superiority over the Noirs in the way they separate sounds, create a greater sense of space in the mix, all those sorts of technicalities, what I find is that the Noirs were consistently more enjoyable. They were the headphone I wanted to listen to, even though I respect what the lyrics were doing. And a part of this overall puzzle for me was that even though the Noirs are producing a smaller and therefore less spacious sounding soundstage, it also resulted in a more coherent overall listening experience. It's like the lyrics ever so slightly over separated things sometimes. And it kind of made me listen to individual pieces of the music rather than the overall musical experience. And that's where the noir shine. And so while both headphones to me are excellent choices and I completely understand people that prefer the lyrics over the noirs, for me the noir stuck around and I sent the demo lyrics back and didn't inquire about a purchase. And so all that brings us around now to the final headphone I've got in this comparison, and that's the ZMF Verite Closed. Yes, I've finally got the ZMF Verite Closed here. If you've been waiting for that review, make sure you subscribe. I'm actually recording that one straight after this one, so it's coming very soon. Hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, you don't want to miss it. But coming back around to the Noirs, the 900 odd US dollar Noir is now up against a two and a half thousand US dollar headphone in the Verite Closed. So it's very tough competition, and I was keen to see just how well they stacked up. For this test, I made my notes using the track Trying to Pull Away by Glenn Hansard from the Once soundtrack. And if you're a music lover, I highly recommend checking out Once. It's a great film based around music. And it's also worth noting that this recording is pretty grungy to start with. It's not the cleanest of recordings, and that in itself made for an interesting test. Listening with the Noirs, it was quite listenable overall, but nothing special. And this isn't a particularly special recording, it's just one of the many tracks that came on as I listened. And to be clear, I used multiple tracks, this is just the one I made notes on. And there was really nothing new to say about the Noirs. Tonally, everything was well balanced. I was using the white felt at this stage, so it was a bit richer and warmer, but generally well balanced across the board. And once again, in a fairly small and compact soundstage. Moving over to the VCs showed me a much leaner and more mid-range forward presentation, specifically in the upper mid-range area. There's no doubt to me that the sound from the VCs comes across as more resolving and with a greater sense of separation of sounds and overall space. To try to line things up a bit better, I removed the damping from the Noirs to see how they compared with no damping, 
And what I found that was the Noir swung too much in the other direction on a track like this that's already a bit grungy and not the nicest recording. And so the Noirs became a bit unenjoyable with no damping, whereas the VC struck a really nice balance between having detail and clarity in the top end, but not getting overly aggressive. Now it might sound like I'm leaning towards a win for the VCs, but that's not really the case. What I actually found was that I liked both headphones equally for different reasons. The VCs are definitely the headphone I'd reach for if I wanted that speed and resolution that they provide. But if you're someone that prefers a bit more warmth and a slightly more relaxed listening experience, but not getting relaxed in the sense of being smooth or flabby, just not as energetic and dynamic, then I actually think the Noirs are probably the better choice. As I flicked through lots of different tracks listening to both of these headphones, what I found was that both headphones separate sounds about the same. And what I mean by that is that you can pick out the individual instruments within the soundstage equivalently on both. So whilst the VC provides a larger sense of space overall, it doesn't provide any improvement in terms of the individual separation and placement of those sounds. They're all a bit closer together on the Noir, but they're all equally as available if you want to hear individual sounds. The VCs definitely have the edge by having a little bit more space in the soundstage. And also for those of you that do want that energy and the dynamics, and maybe a little bit more sense of clarity, that's definitely to me where the VCs do have the edge. But I don't think one is clear cut better than the other. And indeed, I'm thinking that I'll end up owning both. The Noir is far more portable if you're looking for that than the fairly chunky VC, but at the same time the VC is in some ways an even more comfortable headphone and the headphone I tend to want to reach for more when I'm sitting at my desk. So both are fantastic in their own ways and they're very much headphones with their own strengths and weaknesses. The strength of the Noir being its general tonal balance and the ability to tune it and tweak it with the pads to be either slightly rich and warm or quite neutral, and its weakness being a slightly small soundstage size. The Verite Closed, on the other hand, gives you that energy and the dynamics, but it doesn't always do as good a job at being a relaxed and enjoyable listening experience. And again, I don't mean relaxed in a soft and flabby sense. I mean that sometimes that sense of energy and dynamics can be a bit more than what we're wanting. And so where that leads me in the end is I think the Noirs could be the best bang for buck close back on the market. I think for 900 US dollars, I think you're absolutely getting a headphone that stacks up with 2000 and two and a half thousand dollar headphones. They're certainly not perfect, but the combination of price, their design and comfort, the ability to tune them with the pads, all of that combined makes them, in my opinion, one of the very best headphones on the market in terms of closebacks or in general for that matter, and a headphone that I will absolutely comfortably highly recommend. So if you're in the market for a set of closebacks and you've got a budget of say a thousand odd dollars, absolutely jump straight for the Aeon Noirs. As always, I hope you found this review useful. Hopefully it's helped with your purchase decisions. If it has, I'd love it if you hit the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps the channel and it helps to make sure that you see more reviews like this one. For now though, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.